Hello there, YouTube. I am Necrostevo, and join me once again for week number eight in season three of the Pokemon Premier League. This week, it is time for us to face a new opponent off of the backs of yet another loss. Now, after last week's loss to the detective, we need to really cut loose a little bit. We need to knock off the dust. <laughs> we need to really just enjoy all the things that draft league and battling and sacrifices has to offer. So how do we do that? Hmm. Well, first let's take a look at our opponent. Coached by Ellie, the Shanghai Drygons. That's a good place to start. An opponent that really has an appreciation for the first blood and who has an appreciation for the finer things in the chaos that copycat strats can bring and really since she is the you know undisputed best person ever at draft league battling this will be our opportunity to cut loose and have some fun So as per usual, if you do not want to stick around for the team builder, which you really should, there's so much fun. And don't you want to hear me some more? I know you want to stick around for that team builder, but if you don't want to, link to jump straight into the battle. Let's take a look at Ellie's team. The Shanghai Drygons have drafted Iron Valiant, Dragonite, Crocodile, Rotom Wash, Mesprit, Meloetta, Mimikyu, Muk, Jolteon, Bastiodon, and Macargo. Her Terra Captains are Jolteon, which can go into the Grass and Fairy types, Bastiodon, which can go Fairy, Fighting, Ghost, and Water, and Macargo, which can go fairy, water, grass, and steel. I would like to just take a moment and appreciate that she has four Pokemon that all start with the letter M. No, five. She has five because Mesprit, Meloetta, Mimikyu, Muk, Macargo, Pokemon. All right. Anyways, doesn't just, that team lineup just makes you want to go? Mm, lovely. This week's matchup, I did go a little bit off the rails in the prep because after last week's loss where I didn't learn anything and I still brought Choice Bex Primarina, okay, we're not going to make the same mistakes as before. Thank you very much, Shroom Raver and Vepsis for help with prep this week. Let's start off with Primarina. Primarina is one of our dedicated defensive pieces this week. With max HP and max defense, the moves Psychic Noise, Aqua Jet, Moonblast, and Flip Turn, Primarina can serve as a defensive check for some of her offensive Pokemon while still offering the ability to help chip things down and even keep momentum on my side of the field. I went with the ability Liquid Voice because it will turn Psychic Noise into a water type move. Not only will that allow me to hit things like the Crocodile, but it does pretty comparable damage to Muck either way. And um, Muck, I do not want healing up. I imagine that it could very easily run moves like Drain Punch or have leftovers and protect and be annoying and stally. So if I can shut down those recovery options and even smaller things like um, leftovers on a Calm Minding Mesprit or Meloetta, switching into the Psychic Noise, 
I would be very happy to see that. We do have the Citrus Berry on our Primarina just for some additional healing because I do anticipate that I'm going to be pivoting in and out and I won't stay on the field long enough for leftovers to really be helpful, but Citrus Berry is there for that. Our second major defensive piece this week is once again old reliable, specially defensive Claude Sire, this time with the Payapa Berry and the Unaware ability. Payapa Berry means that if I get hit by a psychic type attack, it will not do as much damage the first time. And here I do anticipate either a psychic move from Mesprit, Meloetta, or even the Iron Valiant. Iron Valiant can run so many different moves that it is kind of difficult to prep for all of them. And what did we learn? Don't prep for all of the options. Just play your game. So here, I'm expecting that I'm gonna get hit by a psychic move. And in all those situations, I'd love to get hit by that move, live it and hit back with either an earthquake or a poison jab with spikes here to help chip down her team and recover to keep myself healthy against the like of her special attackers. Our third defensive piece, which can be an offensive win condition is our Terra Steel Rocky Helmet Bronzong. With Iron Defense, Body Press, Rest and Flash Cannon, we can go Terra Steel to boost the power of our Flash Cannon, while Iron Defense keeps our HP relatively intact because she has a lot of physical attackers. Rest is here if I'm able to nab a couple of Iron Defense boosts, then I can easily get my HP back and even swap in and out with Rocky Helmet to help chip things down that are going for contact moves. I also really like Rocky Helmet here because it is a high likelihood that Bronzong is going to get knocked off. And with Terra Steel, that means I won't be weak to it. I almost went Terra Fighting, but with Terra Steel, I can force options like Close Combat or Focus Blast from things like Iron Valiant. Whereas with Terra Fighting, she could go for the much safer Moon Blast or Spirit Break. So at least with Close Combat and Focus Blast, there's the accuracy and the defense drops on that side of things. Now, let us talk offense. We have these three defensive pieces, but what are they here to help us position for? Up first, we have our Assault Vest Darkrai. This time we're going to take advantage of Darkrai's bulk, and a lot of people do not consider Darkrai bulky, but they forget that he is a mythical Pokemon, and he has quite respectable stats all around. With the Assault Vest and a little bit of investment into our Spadef. We have enough speed on Darkrai to outspeed Valiant. And if we have that Assault Vest with the investment there, it avoids the one hit KO from Moonblast. And I will only take around 30% from Vacuum Wave. Because of Darkrai's typing and its speed against her team, I'm very certain we're going to see Vacuum Wave here. And with Assault Vest, I can bring it in and throw off attacks earlier, knowing that as long as I keep it above half health, then I can take a vacuum wave and KO the Iron Valiant back with a Sludge Bomb. We also have Knock Off here just because I can also see something like Assault Vest Crocodile or maybe even Choice Scarf Crocodile trying to pivot in and take a Dark type move from Darkrai and then immediately threaten me out. And I do not want to mess around with Choice Scarf Crocodile because as we saw when we drafted it last season, it can put out some serious damage and with Moxie and a Choice Scarf, it can be very difficult to stop. Now, Crocodile has an interesting speed tier against our team. Crocodile has a base 92 speed, and so that does put it right above Annihilate. Annihilate has base 90 speed, but that does not stop us here. On both Annihilate and Arcaludon this week, we will be running Choice Scarf. Dual Scarfs this week. Why? Because it's October now. It's starting to get a little cooler out if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, and really that's all the reason that I need. We did brew up that tea at the end of the battle last week, and so now hopefully we're going to be able to get cozy with these scarves and do some serious damage to our opponent. Now Annihilate with the Choice Scarf, it serves as a good dedicated lead in case she tries to lead with a very bulky Dragonite and take advantage of a weakness policy and maybe set up Dragon Dance. I can just two-shot it with Ice Punch. Close combat generally always one shots Crocodile. It also puts solid damage down onto something like a Meloetta that's trying to set up. You will also notice I have Shadow Claw on Annihilate this week alongside U-Turn, and that's because I do not anticipate Annihilate getting hit. 
if it does get hit, it will probably get KO'd in one shot. And so Annihilate this character really dance around with the immunities and um, probably not take too much. It's either going to be a full HP or it's going to get knocked out. It's how I really envision Annihilate being played this week. And that makes sense, right? He's already uh, dead. Our Kaludon, I envision either coming in mid game and pressing Steel Beam because Steel Beam can even two hit KO a Rotom Wash or in the late game, locking into either Flash Cannon or Body Press. I don't see Mimikyu coming to this game, but without Mimikyu, she does not have a swap into Draco Meteor. And because of my defensive pieces, I can much more easily go for Draco Meteor and then swap out to one of my defensive pieces here. But between Arcaludon and the Annihilate and the Darkrai, I am expecting to clean up in the late game and then in the early game pivot between my defensive pieces, hopefully getting some spikes up in the process and chipping things down until they are in range. So everyone, that is our horrible horde this week. And let's get to the battle. It is time. <laughs> Thank you all for being here for the match this week. We can see that Ellie has brought Crocodile, Meloetta, Iron Valiant, Jolteon, Mimikyu, and Muk. Seeing this team preview, I got a couple of her Pokemon incorrect. I honestly did not think that Mimikyu would be coming here. And I, I only tentatively had Muk on there. I thought I might see Rotom Wash over the Muk just because of uh, her setup options kind of pressure my Claw Sire to run unaware and so she could hit it with a water type move. But all that aside, we are sticking to the plan of leading with our choice Scarf Annihilate. And depending on what she leads with, I might just try to punch it in the face because again, we're just trying to knock off the rest in this battle and enjoy it. It's October. It is finally our time of the year. And if that doesn't give us a power boost, I don't know what will, besides maybe the new moon. Either way though, Ellie, thank you for meeting me on the field of battle. I have heard of your thirst for first blood, and so you better believe that we will be going for that as well. Now we can see that she leads off with Jolteon, which of course naturally outspeeds Annihilate. I do know that I'm faster here because of my Choice Scarf investment. However, I decide to hard swap out to hopefully trick her into thinking that she's faster than me. She immediately goes for the Terra, which I needed to see as well because she could go into a Grass or a Fairy type. I expected Fairy, but really either type struggles against Claude Sire. So she goes for Shadow Ball, and this does so little damage that um, I wasn't really sure what item she was. And so thinking that she might swap and go for a baton pass or um, maybe even try to hard swap into something else, I decided to just layer up. Now in our previous battle, we did not layer up early enough and we were punished for it later on with the flinch. Here we're going immediately for the spikes before they have that opportunity to happen. She goes out to the crocodile and I did anticipate this happening. But my Bronzong is not terra yet, so it is not a swap in to this. And so our mid ground is to go out into Primarina. It does get its Citrus Berry knocked off very early, which I don't appreciate that she's getting clapped there. You can see that I let the timer go down a lot. I decided to go for flip turn here. A little bit early, she could have put some damage on me with Earthquake, but I figured that Muck would probably be coming in this early because she would want to gauge what I will want to do with my Primarina. I didn't want to reveal the Psychic Noise too early because also the Muck is at too high of HP. It has probably very little reason to be trying to recover that HP as well. On the flip turn, we decide to go out to Bronzong here and it is just time to go ahead and get our Terra off now and that will make my Bronzong a much better swap into the Crocodile in the future and she'll have to determine if I'm going to go into Primarina and go for the Earthquake or if I'm going to go into Bronzong and then she should go for the dark type move. Now, once again, I get knocked off. So I don't, why do you keep knocking off all my items, Ellie? Am I telling some jokes? Is this just like where you hit the guy on the shoulder and you're like, oh, knock it off, you big lug. Stop knocking off my items. I need them. I don't appreciate this. I was a little bit surprised here to see the drain punch. That's okay. It did a little bit more than I expected. 
And I was like, okay, I can at least gauge what set she is with this Terra boosted flash cannon that did all of two damage. This is obviously Assault Vested Muck, because uh, that did completely negligible damage. And I don't, I, <laughs> I was like, this is gonna do so much damage. I think she did more damage to my Claude Sire with the Drain Punch than I did to her with the Flash Cannon. Now, expecting her to swap out and go back to Crocodile, I needed to know if the Crocodile was boots or not, and so I decided to go for Earthquake, because if she stayed in, I could punish her. But if the Crocodile was boots, boots with the fur. then I wanted to get some chip damage on it. But it's not boots, and so I was thinking, is it Scarf? Because she swapped it out immediately after going for knockoff last time. Here she goes for Stealth Rocks, and I was like, would she be Scar Stealth Rocks in this situation? If she is, she'll probably swap out here, right? But if not, she'll stay in. But she swaps out, me thinking that she was trying to maybe bluff a Choice Scarf like I'm bluffing it, because I know that I was bluffing a Choice Scarf. But I went for Body Press. I could have gone for the Flash Cannon there, but I wanted to get off more damage on the Crocodile. I also really could have just gone for uh, Iron Defense. Now here, the time gets really low. I get down to one second because I decide to make a risky play and go into Primarina. It's a bit obvious to stay in here. She goes for a knockoff again and gets the poison touch. And I, I, I was excited because I called the knockoff and not that I knew that she wasn't going to go for a poison type move, but the poison touch proc means that if she has the poison jab, she can take me out from this range. But I can also take her out for this range with the psychic noise but she lives on just a sliver. That kind of felt like when you hear that Mariah Carey song like in the background and it's like, no, I just want to enjoy Halloween in October, please. Please get the Christmas stuff out of the stores. It's just now October, let me enjoy a sliver. So unfortunately she is able to get first blood here, but that does not mean that she will have last blood. We go into our Choice Scarf Primate, and I just go for a U-turn, thinking that she's just gonna sacrifice her muck, but she holds on to it for later. And since I saw how little damage Jolteon did to my Claude Sire earlier, that is the bring in this time as well. Now I could have gone for a layer of spikes, or the poison jab, or the earthquake, or the recover. All four of these are good options. I was very leery about going for recover because she would most likely swap out here and I didn't want to give her any sort of momentum at all. So I do end up going for earthquake. I really wish I had either clicked recover or the spikes here because she ends up sacrificing her muck. Now that gives her a free swap in to the Iron Valiant and this is exactly why we brought the Pyapa Berry. We see here that it's a physical and we use up our Payapa, we see it's Life Orb as well, but then we freaking get flinched. What is this? Claude Sire, I am so sorry. This is two battles in a row where you've gotten flinched by the Psychic type move. When you're just out here trying to do your thing. <sighs> Unfortunately, I have to let Claude Sire go down here because with Life Orb, I do not have a safe swap in here. She could easily swap up moves and there you saw she went for the close combat. On the plus side, this basically confirms that she has Vacuum Wave, and it also confirms that my Darkrai is faster because she doesn't have the booster energy speed and she's not Choice Scarf because she swapped moves. So here, I didn't think she would go for the um, Vacuum Wave this early. Because if I didn't have Assault Vest, it was a roll from here to kill me, I believe, if she was like max special attack. But with the close combat, I was just thinking, there's no way she's going to stay in here. So I'm just going to go for Sludge Bomb, expecting her to go out into Meloetta, maybe. I was hoping that I would snag a poison on something. I hit the Crocodile coming in. And so once again, this Crocodile is staring me in the face, and I'm like, this mother is scarfed. I just know it. I know it. And here, because it is poison and the spikes are up, there's no reason for me to risk my Darkrai because she's going to die at the end of the turn anyway. Does that situation not look a lot like what happened to our Articuno last week? It's weird how these things just keep coming back around in cycles, kind of like the phases of the moon. Anyways though, 
We get a safe swap into our Bronzong on the Earthquake with Levitate, allowing us to dodge that completely. And she does go down to the Poison. Now, Iron Valiant comes back in. Again, we know that it's Life Orbed. We also know it has close combat, and I cannot live a close combat unless I have an Iron Defense up. Expecting her to go for close combat, I decide to make a little bit of an aggressive switch out and to Annihilate. And here, I wanted to reveal that I was Scarfed, specifically. This would be great as a medical Scarf, but he did nothing yet. Now, I did think she was going to swap out here, so I decided to go for a U-turn. But in revealing the Scarf now, that will not only make her change what she preserves in the back, thinking that she outspeeds me, but I will have the secondary Scarfer with my Arcaludon. Thinking that she was faster than me, she went for Spirit Break, and so I'm able to get a little bit of Life Orb damage here. And this also forces her to go for her other option. Now I did click Rest there on the off chance that she decided to go for something weird, but she just goes for Close Combat to finish off my Bronzong, take another 10% from the Life Orb. Bronzong, you did great here. Thank you so much for this part of the battle because last time I brought you to battle, I basically just threw you out in front of a Conk Elder. <sighs> okay, fine. And you got knocked off there too. Oh man, Bronzong has just been getting slapped around. I, it's, it's unfortunate out here. Okay, once again, we know that we are faster with Darkrai and that it is very likely that she will go for Vacuum Wave at some point. Here though, I'm in a position where she's at minus one spadef because of the close combat, and I can basically throw off any move at this point, except for knockoff. I wouldn't knock off at this point. The options that she has is that she could go out into her Meloetta, the Mimikyu, or the Jolteon. None of those really appreciate taking a hit. And except for the Mimikyu, the other ones are all special. So I was completely okay just staying in and going for the Sludge Bomb. Even if she swapped out, I do pretty decent damage to her remaining Pokemon. Now she does blow the whistle here with the red card and sends my Darkrai immediately off the field. But I get sent out into my Primeape. And again, remember earlier, I wanted her to know that I was Scarfed. So here I go for the Shadow Claw because if I had Rage Fist, it would not be powerful enough to KO a Mimikyu, especially if she had any sort of bulk. Hefty, hefty, hefty. And Shadow Claw is strong enough to KO a Mimikyu. And that's just because of the difference in the power if you've taken a hit or not. Now she knows that I'm locked in to my Shadow Claw here. And that's why she goes out to her normal psychic type, Meloetta. Meloetta is immune to Shadow Claw but I can also switch out and come back in later and blow it back with close combat. I decide to go back out to Darkrai knowing that since I have an assault vest, I can take any hit coming out of this Meloetta, even a focus blast. She pulls a very aggressive double and goes back out to her Darkrai. And here is where I figured that I had her in a little bit of a checkmate position because she thinks she can KO me with a vacuum wave but without a critical hit, there is not a single chance that she can KO me. So all I have to do is not get crit and I'll be able to take out the Iron Valiant, which leaves her with just a Jolteon, which I still don't know the item on, and her Meloetta. Now you can see there the Vacuum Wave fails to KO me. That's good with the getting better of avoiding the death. That is good to avoid. And we're able to take out the Iron Valiant with a Sludge Bomb, which is fantastic. And that felt really good, especially after last season where we didn't even get to see the Iron Valiant hit the field because we lost too quickly in the last time we faced a team with an Iron Valiant. So this is the exact opposite situation of that. Um, so other things that are important here though, if her Jolteon is Scarfed, it does outspeed every single teammate that I have, but it can't lock into any one move against this whole team. Like if it locks into a fairy move that beats the Darkrai and the Annihilate, but our Caledon can take that and one-shot it. If it locks into an electric type move, our Caledon can also take that move and hit it back as well. So I switch into our Caledon raw here 
and holy Magikarp, that alluring voice did a ton of damage and I was like, this thing is specs because that did way too much damage. Since she specs, I know I outspeed and I'm able to take down the Jolteon. And here is where I imagine that she finds out that I'm choice scarfed um, to be a fly on the wall to hear the curse words in that room. Can you imagine the curses that just came out of that coach in that moment? Ah, I know that they were great. Definitely summoning up some demons. Now Meloetta comes in and I'm just going to stay in here and keep on going for flash cannons. Uh, she does start setting up with calm minds. And I was like, I does she have a berry? Berries and, and berries. Berries and what else? Or like, why is she going for calm mind in this situation? And so here, if her Meloetta was faster than my Pokemon, we could have a problem, but we can verify that immediately. If I outspeed her here, then I know that my primate outspeeds her. And if my primate outspeeds her, then my annihilate outspeeds her. Wait, why did I even start talking about primate? Did you all see that cool Pokemon special where the primate um, evolved into annihilate mid battle? That really made me hype. So here, this is a checkmate position. I just have to not misclick my move because I definitely almost clicked Shadow Claw. <gasps> And that is a victory. Oh, hurrah! For the Victorian Shadows here in week eight of the Pokemon Premier League. Thank you all for hanging in there with us. Even though last week we missed another move and we, we had that loss, you'll notice this week I did not use any moves <laughs> that would have that type of opportunity to miss. At a certain point though, it, it is Pokemon, so you're gonna miss, you're gonna have hacks happen. And I really sometimes enjoy that chaos that comes along with that. If you don't wanna ever miss, I think, um, I don't know if it was Pokemon or Blunder, but it's like, if you don't wanna miss, then click Water Gun, you know? But sometimes the risk is worth it, but when you're fighting against players in this league, sometimes I just need the reminder, you usually can't afford to miss. Because these players, every single opponent we've had this whole season will immediately punish you hard for it. So. Thank you all for watching the battle this week. Please go check out Ellie's side of the narration, as I'm sure it is masterfully entertaining, as they always are. That wasn't bad at all. Next week is actually the last week of the regular season of the Pokemon Premier League. And our final opponent for the season will be PokeMMD, the Doctor. State your name, rank, and intention. The Doctor. Doctor. Fun. Now I've met a few doctors in my time. I'm actually a doctor myself. A Juris doctor, but you know, a doctor nonetheless. What, like it's hard? And I am incredibly excited to fight him, just as I have been every other coach this season. So please be sure to tune in next week so we can see how we do against Pokémon. Because when we win that fight, that'll be the start of a whole new ritual. You won't want to miss it. Have a good night, everyone. Good night, Mr. Renfield.